Hey, you doing here? Okay, we're back with another live stream. Oops, another not live stream because I still haven't. Uh, that's what I'm going to try to fix again. <clears throat> so I decided the other day I got to wondering, well, I'm not so 100% sure that I've got autom uh, automatic updates set on this system. I just thought I did. <clears throat> so I want to check on that. And so I'm going to get on the desktop and I started up a search. There we go. I did a search on my documents or uh, my backup of my documents so I'd get everything that's been put in there for Chrome. For uh, I want to check and see. Let's see. The Chrome job is what does the, uh, you know, any kind of scheduled automatic job and uh, <clears throat> okay yum install and so that there will be a Chrome job for um, the updates if it's all set up so I'm going to try to find the ah well and also there's logs <clears throat> that's for a different machine though but uh, yeah I could look in the logs too I guess I think I'll look in the logs first because that will be, you know, might be easier. We'll see. I'm quite sure with that, those two right there, examples, I'd have to look at them, but that's not what I'm looking at. I'm not looking, uh, no sidetracks. That right there might be useful though. God, but monitoring. Oh, okay. I saved the web page for all how to do Chrome jobs and everything. So I, if I want to open one up, that'll be it. <clears throat> but first, let's look. I just remembered there's a couple. I have like three log viewing apps on here, and I never can remember which one is the easiest to run, uh, view them in, but. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> sorry. Thought I would check <clears throat> everything's working while I was. I'm trying to. I moved the mic away from me while I was coughing too. Okay. Um. I don't know. I'll just pick that one because it seems like I always start at the top and work my way down and end up being surprised about how nice one of them is. And it might be this one. Okay, you can't read system logs in this one. You have to open this up as root to see them. So, uh, let's just see. Yeah, no Chrome coming up in there. Let's click on all. Maybe that was it. See, yeah, it has a nice... I don't want to look, activate the search, though. Why not? Did a minute ago. What in the world? Just because I switched... Oh, that's a, a search icon, but that doesn't do searches. But it did a minute ago in the other window. Was that always up there? Okay, yeah, I'm not going to be able to see it. Okay. Sometimes if you have find a really nice application, it might be better to log file viewer. And then what's the one at the top? Well, the, the top one, Fox Network log. Viewer, that's not going to help. Looks like maybe I only have two just general log viewers. The other one I think is a real nice interface. See, this one asks you to log in as a root. So that you can see the, uh, you know, all the logs in the whole system. But it's a little, I think it's a little harder to DNF RPM log. There, there's a Chrome log right there. Either one will probably show you your updates, but let's actually there's a drop down and you can. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to see. Oh, you can control F or, and it works. Update. Okay. Nothing to do with DNF or updates and the Chrome logs, huh? Let's go there and make sure I'm not. not missing something that <clears throat> I thought you should be able to be on the you know the the 
search both days. Okay, so that's not what I expected. All right, let's DNF log, DNF RPM. It started on DNF RPM. That would, to me, no. Hmm. See what my uh, point, my uh, goal here is finding out if it's been running updates automatically. Oops. Let's see. Debug updates. Meta will expire after seconds. This is in DNF log. It's talking about debug, <clears throat> some sort of debug. Um, it just says debug repo. Oh, seems to be a repo that's not not con it's not able to contact. Hmm. Oh, missing file modules. Bar cache. Oh. Let's go back a couple. Put back over there so I can just hit enter. Let's see. Repo using cache for updates. Same thing over and over and over. Hmm. Well, I don't want to go forever here. Let's just try to de 28, 29. Now, this don't make sense at all. This is the 28th, but the 29th is in there, and it's full. There's something off about that. <clears throat> but instead of searching all the, you know, three or four, three days there, I'll try to search in just one day. Let's try this. Nope. Mm -hmm. Something besides debug that has doing an up, trying to do an update that I don't understand. Maybe that means that's a debug of the problem. Something going wrong with RPM fusion, <clears throat> not being able to contact it. Downloading from remote updates. Mirrors for door project dot org. Should be some readout like finished or complete. Okay, <clears throat> this is why I don't go to logs all the time. There's so much junk in there. And this one, I mean, you see everything, but that other one, I think it's a lot easier to search and find what you want. I mean, I can just kind of look through it, but I don't think I'm going to see anything. Let's look at the most. All I see is about debug, debug, debug. Missing file modules YAML. And metadata cache directory. Seems to be a problem with that. <clears throat> so, I'm getting out of there. It's just starting to bug me. Okay, um, 
I mean, it is good to see if, you know, the logs tell you if, you know, things are actually being run or not. Let's see. That one up there, network log viewer, and then log viewer, and then logs, and that's it. See what it's called. Is it just called? Oh, command genome logs. That's what I wanted. Genome dash logs. Okay, this is genome logs. Okay, so I'm going to run it as uh, super user as root. <clears throat> all right. Well, let's make the full full screen so we'll be able to read all the output. We're on desktop. Yeah. Okay. I didn't get my. Okay, I didn't get it. It didn't stay. I should shouldn't have shut that window. But I believe it was genome logs. There we go. Let's see if it's going to work. <clears throat> you still you usually do get errors when you open stuff up in the terminal like that. It's not done yet. So. When you do it as root, anyway. You'd think it's not going to work, and then it does. Unable to read user logs this time. Well, that's fine. I don't need user logs. I don't know how I was able to search that first time when I clicked on the left side. Maybe that was already up and I didn't realize it. <laughs> I just thought it popped up. That didn't make sense. Okay. Yeah, see, it doesn't have. I'm on all, but it doesn't have as much stuff in there. Now, maybe it, that other one just shows you more. I guess this one just doesn't show as much as in, in the way of logs as the other one does. But I'm starting to guess now. Nothing that looks like a system update. Started DNF automatic. Got to watch out because I they have something called atomic. Oh, that is atomic. A U T O M I C. I didn't know I had automatic. A U T O M A. Oh, that is atomic. My eyes are so bad. When I see atomic and automatic, I can't tell the difference until I stare at it. <coughs> so this is automatic. DNF automatic services has finished. That's actually just DNF automatic started up during boot, I think. Yeah, it just says it finished starting up. It's not that it's done the update. And again, same thing again. So I'm still not sure. already look for updates no updates <clears throat> okay oops yeah that's back to uh, where I can work again clear it out so it doesn't look so crappy so I'm already in his root in the terminal now I'm gonna have to open up the Firefox so I can look at that file that's HTML <coughs> And uh, that's probably <clears throat> not <coughs> the search I need to make, though. It might be easier to use Google. I just thought, well, since I already have it, I might find. Okay, now I'm going to open this one. should open it up. I didn't open it up. Oh, I opened the folder. Clicked the wrong thing. That. I think we'll open it up. Yeah, okay. 
All right, now automating system tests. Okay, update. See if this is the one that's all about how to use Chrome and Anachrome. This is not about how to set up automatic updates. I don't think it's even. In, I thought it might be in there, but it's not. So, uh, <clears throat> and there's no. I searched for the word updates, and it didn't uh, see anything else about. Install DNF. Okay. So it's not what I'm looking for. All right. Let's see. Um, auto updates or automatic updates. I don't know how well that'll search, but we'll see. <clears throat> let's see. This is Fedora 28. Set up auto updates. I may get there quicker like this. There we go. Door wiki. Adjusting automatic updates. It shows that it's in the uh, in the GUI in genome <clears throat> preferences software updates and KDE it's applications settings software updates all right let's see this is twenty eight. Oh, there are auto updates and upgrades in progress. So I've got a folder for that. And that is in that folder. <clears throat> okay. I started, I, that kind of went through the back of my mind, but I was like, oh, I don't know if I have it. I don't want to look for it. So let's go to system preferences. We'll try that first because it may be that this is a, System preferences, system software updates. So genome three is different than Mate, which was you know based on Genome two. Well, if it's if there's something in there, I ought to be able to find it. In the um, I figured I was going to have to run commands. <coughs> DNF updater, add or, let's see, add or remove update software on this computer. Well, I think that's what they were talking about. Let's see. Uh, actually, no. Add or remove. That's going to be that other app that I installed because I didn't like the way DNF was working. Yeah, that's just called software, I think. But... Um, doesn't mean that it's work set up and working just because you turn it on in these these because they're old and they're not really using them anymore. See, it doesn't even have all its icons and everything. <coughs> there it is. There is an updates tag. I mean, tab. Let's see if it seems to be turned on in there. But there, I guess I'll go through the commands and just make sure it's set up and how it's set up. <coughs> for instance my server I was actually able to turn on automatic updates in the uh, remote uh, admin tool cockpit well this is going to be take forever okay and um, to come in if it's going to work oh there it is yeah I know Fedora 29 is available that's not what I'm wanting to look at 
Okay, this is about. This is software. That's what I thought. I'm going to close it, but I want to go to the. Make sure it closes. Enome software. If it doesn't go down in a minute, I'm going to have to force close it because it'll interfere with DNF even working. Well, hang on and give it a little chance to finish closing. Oh, here we go. Set up. Auto updates in Fedora. Like I have the same, kind of the same thing twice. That's Fedora 23. Now let's go ahead and not look at that just yet. Well, let's, it could be wrong, yeah. <clears throat> okay, and I'm going to say that page really didn't give me what I needed, so. That's actually the auto updates page, isn't it? That's Fedora 22. Oh, we're on it. This is the one. It just, we just need newer. See if we got 28 in there. There it tells you why you might or might not want to do the uh, those updates for 22 and later versions. Okay, so this is the page. Or later versions. Versions. Okay, now we want to edit. They're doing it with gedit in the terminal, but etc dnf automatic config. So that's where we want to go. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's how I watch my. Actually, let's just go there, and then if I need to edit it, then I'll have to open it up. And I should be able to open it up. Let's see. I have to look again. I don't know if that was a DN, oh, ETC DNF automatic config. All right, DNF. There it is, automatic config. Oh, yeah, see, I have done it because there's, there's the original as a text file. So let's just view it. <coughs> Kind of upgrades. See, I don't want to do upgrades. You can set it up to do an upgrade automatically. Okay, upgrade type. Well, wait a minute. Maybe they are using <clears throat> the word upgrade now. They used to always separate upgrade to the next version of Fedora from update, says to update your software. But I have upgrade type default. Well, that may just be that. It, Default, all available upgrades, security, okay. I think they have changed the words to upgrade. Upgrade type default, random sleep 300. I guess that's minutes. Just receive updates, use DNF, automatic notify timer. Other rape dips should be downloaded when they're available by DNF. Download updates, yes. Okay, apply updates, yes. Yeah. Emitter, system name, my host. Hmm. Name to use for this system in messages that are emitted. Default is the host name. Oh, I see. So that's good. How to send messages. I probably didn't. STDIO message will be sent. STDIO useful. Okay, so what's set on STDIO? STD out. I said IO. Well, it says SDIO, and then message will be sent to STD out. I'm sent to email. You'd have to set that all up. Email. I actually did set it up, it looks like, to let it, or it was automatic, automatically set up to go to root. 
So I could go into my root. You can just view your root mail by just going there in the file manager. It's the only way I really know how to do it. But root Lenovo F5 localhost. You can see if it's telling you email to root, email to localhost command to execute this Python. It's like it might not be turned on though. Command. It's like everything's turned on, but it's telling it to do it. Might not be sending it by email. Man, okay, that's command for the STD. STR, what? Anyway, the first one. But see, it's not, uh, it's commented out, so it just doesn't look like it's going to do anything. Command format, cat. I'm not sure which ones you'd have to do. And then the email. Looks like maybe. It is set up. I generally leave it on the default because it's easier. <clears throat> Setting your system up to email you, like on your regular email, is a little harder to do. It's not that hard, but I just usually don't want to fool with it. Debug level one. Okay, so anyway, it's set up. I know that much. Let's see, where did it, where are, does it say where to go look at the mail at? I can't remember where it's at. Or do I? <coughs> root of local host. Oh, that was not set up. Root example.com. Maybe it's not actually set up. I might not have finished setting it up. I might have tried and then not got it set up. Let's see if it'll let me close that just to get it out of the way. And then original. Let's look at the original first. Can't even view it? I can't view that, that text file. Okay, well, that's fine. Not sure why the, the real one I could... <laughs> what are the per permissions on that? Oh, no access. So I should have gave it access, like view and viewer access. Well, let's just go into Crusader root mode so I can do what I need to do. That was just plain funny, actually, to me. Anyway, okay, it's open. I'm gonna close the regular version because I need to. I need to cut back on what I got running here. I'm gonna open. Let's see. These look like they're the 8.2 kilobyte, 1.9 megabyte. I'll just open them both up. Oh, that's to do with Jeff, so that doesn't matter. Let's make sure that gets opened up, and then. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I saved, I actually just saved the uh, Gmail page that that was on. Let's look at this right quick while it's open. Let's see. Automatic update. See, this is older. Yeah, Fedora 23. See, they're still using Yum. Edit the config file. Apply updates. That says no. I would change it to yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh, might have been all. I think you had to do a little more than that. Best practices. Okay, yeah, this is. Well, I guess it's okay because. Just remember the, the what I was looking at said Fedora twenty two and on. It could have been an older page though. This page here. I'll close it too because it could be old. Let's see. They always want to change things a little bit. Uh, every other release or some, you know. So um, let's go look in their folder. There it is, updates. Now, I don't know which ones I just added. Well, one, a couple of these were already in there. Let's go to that one. That's a, one I haven't looked at recently. Group install made desktop. That's made desktop. Why is that doing in there? Am I in the wrong page? No, that says auto updates install. Oh, Linux info auto depth uh, updates installing mate desktop in server. Oh, I was pre oh that's Fedora twenty three. Fedora twenty eight. There we go. I was lazy and put all that together. Fedora twenty eight auto updates and upgrades info. All 
auto updates, auto updates. There's automatic right there. Automatic. Oh, automatic and atomic. There we go. Those are two different things. Okay, well, I'm going to start at this one. See how if it's any different. No, there's a Fedora 22 or later versions. And then you have to enable it. Yeah, system enable now DNF. Automatic timer. To enable to start the system timer. Check status of automatic. There we go. There we go. Changes as of Fedora 26. Oh. Three timers. Okay. Download timer, installer, and notify timer. I only notify via configure emitters and ETC DNF automatic config. Still use download updates and apply update setting from the inside ETC DNF automatic config. Okay. All right, now, it's not the, I, I just want to know for sure that this is set up. That's why I'm going through all this trouble. Let's see what we get. All right. Ah, here we go. Next, Tuesday. This is Monday at uh, 121 Central Standard Time. 44 minutes left. So it must be set at about, what? I think it does, I don't think it, does it at the same time every day? Well, I know my I started seeing that about my server. I, it had uh, in um, in the autom in the remote admin tool, you could just set it up there in the in the web browser in the GUI in the web browser, and that was easy. And I did that, but you only had one option, and that was to set it up what time. You couldn't say like do updates an hour after uh, boot up or something like that. And it used to be able to do that. I'm almost certain. Um, Matter of fact, there, it can be like more automatic, as it um, it only checks for updates. Uh, well, let's say your machine's not. Think what I'm trying to say is, if your machine's not running when it's time to update, then it will wait a certain amount of time after you boot up and then try to check it. That may be why it's at a weird time like that. So maybe it is doing that at an oddball time. Okay, Monday last was Monday. At uh, 116, 15 minutes ago. Okay, so it just checked. Okay, so it's checking and then make cast timer. And then that one says 1940. Oh, this is military time, so 121. I guess that's still 121 a.m., I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's the afternoon that gets confusing, it gets in the 15s and 1900s and stuff. 20 hours left, so I guess that's the next one on Tuesday. It's really, okay, left, next, past, unit. Okay, so it is, it is on, which I already knew that because I just looked at the file, but it is also working. That's what I want to know. So, if there's any updates, <clears throat> it just ran. Now, if there were any updates, DNF up DATE. There shouldn't be any. I feel safe to type. I didn't want to type this command and have uh, have it running updates forever the other day. But now I'm going to do it because I think it's already checked and whatever needed. Well, there shouldn't have been. I don't think there's any readout telling you updates are running, though. So if they were being installed right now, it, might, it would say, can't do it. It's busy. DNF is busy right now. That's what it would do. But if there's not any, which I suspect, then it'll just come back and say nothing to do. Well, it'll probably check all the repositories and do a bunch of stuff and then say nothing to do. <clears throat> okay, so, um, oh, yeah, I was going to go look at that mail, and I can still do that. Yeah, well, or what? let's see. Yeah, it's still working, so let's, let's go look at the... Uh, 
think it's in bar mail. Yeah. Dawn and RPC. Hmm. Let's just view. Should have said, I thought it was going to say Dawn and Root. They both say zero bytes. Looks like they don't have anything in them. And it is empty. That would make sense. Um, it must not be the right place to see the root mail. No, it shouldn't be any root server in there. I can't remember where the mail is besides there. That must be a different place than the place where you can actually read it. I guess I could search for mail. Var log mail log. Oh, okay, but they're all zero bytes. Var mail. Oh, it's still searching. Yeah, there's, okay, here we go. Now, there is a problem. Um, timers pass. Let's see. Nothing to do. The, the crux of it, there's nothing to do. Now, let's go see what's going on with uh, the problems. Metadata explanation check. Okay, problem. Package VirtualBox guest editions conflicts with VirtualBox server provided by VirtualBox server. So and so, so and so. Cannot install a best update candidate for package VirtualBox guest editions. Why does I have VirtualBox server on there? Problem with install packages. Virtual edition package VirtualBox guest conditions conflicts with VirtualBox server. Okay, well that's really interesting. So copy. I think what I'm going to do is uh, after I make me a record of this. Yeah, you can't save that output. Okay. Uh, is that search finished over there yet? Hmm. Shader's not looking so hot, is it? Oh, that genome software app is still running. Okay, see? That's what I was afraid it was going to do. I'm surprised it didn't jack things up. But that wasn't the uh, error message we got. So, but I have seen it hang up where DNF can't do anything when you open it up. That's, he doesn't install that, I think. Well, sometimes it does. A, there are Sometimes when I just can't find an app and I know it's there somewhere, that thing will find it and I can install it, though. I have been using it some. <coughs> DNF, Crusader, KDSU. Let's see. Vert. Libvirt. Okay, so I don't have any virtual box server running or anything. Okay, now this is at least done. Let's see. Oh, it's still searching. That is way more than I expected right there in var mail. Var cache log watch. Cache. I wasn't expected to be in cache. Look at that. Var run media dawn Seagate expansion drive. Why is it going into my Seagate expansion drive? No wonder it's taking so long. Well, I need to stop it. I didn't know you could get to my Seagate expansion drive through the from the folder var var run close run media look at that no yeah but that's not how i normally get there i normally go i'll show you you get on your root directory and you go to run i wonder if one of those is a shortcut to, to the other but there you go <laughs> okay well i'm going to quit looking for that mail folder because it's really not important to what i was doing to me i uh, just want to kind of get somewhere where I can't break the whole system. Best thing to do is probably to go to 
even though I'm in as root, I'm going to go to a home folder. Go to my that that's the wrong folder, but that I wanted. There we go. We'll go there and stay in there until I need to do something again. Okay. Now, oh, I never did finish. I got all sidetracked. Um. I'll just open up a text app, K-Rite's the one I like the best. I think it uses less resources. I'm thinking about resources because I've got so many windows open and I've got, uh, you know, making a video. There we go. Ah! Trying to copy it. Okay. That won't make a good file name, but I'll leave it up there like that, and then I'll have to edit the file name. Yeah. Door 28. You can't really, I don't think you can leave, I don't want to leave those in there even if you can. Okay, now, but that's not how the command goes. Now we got an error. Conflicts with virtual box server. All those errors when I'm booting up, I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Let's see. Now, I don't want to try to do DNF remove uh, because, uh, let's see, so my updates are okay. And since I'd ran a DNF command, I needed to close that anyway. My updates are okay. There's how you set it up if you want to. You have to make sure Chrome's installed. And then you <clears throat> edit that. You can do it with the, you know, the gedit file with that command. Gedit's a text editor. Actually, gedit's a GUI text editor, so I guess it would open it up. Okay, so I'm going to close the browser to give, like I said, shut down on, cut down on the use on the machine here. Because I need, DNF is a heavier user, so I'm going to open up DNF. I've got Apper, I've got Software, which doesn't show up in this menu, it's somewhere else. And then I've got Drag over DNF, which is the default. And, uh, <coughs> Apper and Software don't work like they used to, but, well, software, I think, works. I don't know if Apple hardly works at all anymore. Apple was always the default, and then they went to that software app, and it, I didn't like it, and I didn't use it. I went and installed Apple, and then the next thing you know, next distro or two later, they didn't have software as the default anymore. Well, they, I don't know, that might have been when they went to uh, Yum Extender. They went to Yum Extender, I think it's the default, and then the DNF Yum Extender. Okay, let's see what this is and why I have... Oh, I'm trying to search when it's not done yet. It's got to load. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, there is something about... You know, there's something about uh, in the boot... There's boot, In the boot errors, there's several. There's two main boot errors that I haven't ever tried to fix, and that's not what I'm trying to do right now, but since I ran into it, I thought I would 
And I, I'm going to go into D, uh, what I was planning on doing was if the updates are working, then I already know that there's not the updates haven't fixed OBS Studio. So um, I'm going to uninstall OBS, and I just realized I can't make a video of that unless I use a different. Uh, <laughs> I can do that. I can just make a. I can use a different video making software. I have. I already have. A, okay, now I've got that pasted in there, and it finally finished loading. Now I can click search. Yeah, there it is. Virtual box server. Oh, I'm a host server for virtual virtual box. I don't think that uh, it virtual box will work without that. I was thinking of server. I was thinking of you know like a web server or something like. But no, I think it uses server as part of the software. So let's see what it is that uh, guest edition is doing here. I wonder uh, for guest editions is not absolutely required to run VirtualBox. So I have I don't have the newest one. Oh, I think that was what it was saying. Let's see, let's look at that again. I'm wondering if I had the newer one, it would work. Let's go see what, what, everything we got that's virtual box first. And then I won't search. Okay, here's what I got. VirtualBox Virtualizer for the PC. Okay. Then kernel module. That's the thing that it can't load that kernel module. And I don't know if I put that in there or if it was just part of it when I installed it. Got the AG mods and the K mods to make it uh, not to update VirtualBox until the. Uh, well, no, it makes it not update the kernel until VirtualBox catches up. Okay. Then VirtualBox Guest Editions. And yeah, I know I have four, kernel 14, 15, and 16, and see it's got the K mods in there for it. Okay, now the VirtualBox Guest Editions. Better integration of VirtualBox guests with the host, including file sharing, uh, clipboard sharing, and seamless mode. That's why I have it in there. Okay. Should have done it like that, I guess. I'm doing screenshots so I'll know what I've done here. So, yeah. Uh, so what I'm wondering, but why do we need core part? It says it's a core part, though. But the whole uh, thing can't update, it seems. So what I can do is get rid of the guest additions for now. And then put it back in once it's updated. Doesn't seem to be holding up any other updates, but it's on update. So um, I think this will be a worthy, a worthwhile sidetrack, a worthy sidetrack. <laughs> and I really don't know why. Uh, why that server thing? I, I mean, maybe I just don't remember, and it's always been part of it. But I don't see why it needs a server to run but I don't remember so all I remember is I remember VirtualBox the main part of the app and I remember guest editions I don't remember about the act mods and K mods either to be honest but uh, we're going to uninstall that and a good thing I'm doing screenshots because I didn't pay any attention to how many versions there are There are, 
there is more than one virtual box guest additions in there. Let's see. What I'm uninstalling is 5.2.22. Yeah, 5.2.8 is a newer one. So it's hung up and not being able to update. I do know I can uh, copy and paste between my host and, and my virtual box. You know, my, my, my host being the Lenovo i5, the machine, you know, the, the hardware machine, and the virtual box system, whatever I'm running in there. And that's really good. It's really helpful. <clears throat> but... Uh, well, that's how come I installed guest editions. There was a time where you really didn't need it. When I first started using it years ago, you had to install that to do a lot of things, like even just, uh, I was thinking that's what made USB work right and everything. And USB does not work right right now, too. But uh, then they said, okay, you don't really need the guest editions. It's being depreciated. And then the next thing I know, after another version or two, it seemed that I really needed it to get some of it, you know, like, Probably this stuff that it's saying right there to work. So I'll put it back in there. Applying changes. That is not, you know, my what I'm trying to do. Okay, so um, while that's doing that, let's see. Record. Uh oh, I don't think I have GTK record my desktop on here. Paperless medical records. Yeah, it should be. I don't think I have GTK. I don't think I've ever installed it on this system. Nope. GTK is just the uh, graphic user. There's GTK and several, well, what are the others that you see a lot? Anyway, GTK is just a type of, I guess it's language. The It's not the language. And that's just a kind of like, you know, KDE desktop. Well, GTK is a window, window manager, window maker, you know, for graphic windows. But this is, and they just like to call it uh, GTK term, terminal, uh, Developers with, I'm not quite sure what that is, and uh, GTK Wave Display Simulation Results, and uh, but if they uh, there's GTK Record My Desktop, oh, and QT Record My Desktop, which are graphic user interfaces for the app Record My Desktop. Okay, so I do not have Record My Desktop. I don't have any other desktop recording apps on here, so I'm going to have to install one if I'm going to have to. I want to make a video of the, you know, removal, the uninstallation. Okay, it's done. So, uh, something could be updated now. Or I, I didn't pay attention. That was, might have been, been waiting to update all along. There's several things. Why is, oh, that is an update. Oh, okay. So those would probably, I'm not going to run, I said, oh, I'll run updates, but no, I'll let that take care of itself. Just have to try and remember to come back and, I'll probably remember even if, um, let's see, OBS. Let's see. I know it's, uh, I don't know how to search for it. Let's just search for OBS then. Yeah, here it is. OBS Studio. Let's see if there's any. Uh, I've got 22.03. Looks like they're. Oh, that's a 686 version. Looks like I have the newest version. think so it's so hard to figure things out with it all spread out that way so far and it defaults to being like that instead of automatically fitting the text um, and I can kind of drag it in but 
Video Devel. Okay, let's see. Development. Which ones are? Okay, there's two other versions there right above it. The two above it. Yeah, 21.1 and 21.1. Sig Damon. I wonder what that is. Build service client and daemon daemon can be used to sign anything via oh GPG by communicating with the remote server to avoid the need to host the private key on the same server. I don't think that has anything to do with OBS Studio. I'm guessing. OBS Studio is uh, Dash Studio. Okay. Documentation. Libs. Yeah, I don't see anything that I, you know, I could add that might accidentally help me. I've already got everything. I don't, I mean, you don't OT try, but it's usually not helping it uh, for some reason Linux software usually doesn't uh, usually if there's a bug it just needs to be fixed and it will get fixed at some point usually just uninstalling and reinstalling doesn't usually help I have seen it fix something that's before though so uh, yeah I guess I'm going to need to record my desktop I can't think of anything else. Hit enter again. Can't think of anything else. Froze record my desktop. Oh. And look at that. That's the only thing under record my desktop. Well, let's go see what it is. It must be a command line. Either that or it's just not being found. Um, froze record my desktop froze plugin for screencasting using record my desktop as a back end oh. okay that's weird this may be one of those examples of where DNF just not finding what's there could be that record my desktop is like this maybe yeah that might be it record my desktop I don't know real point in going I could go to their website but I don't have my browser open and well I mean it would tell me if it was GUI or uh, nothing there yeah and if I search for desktop I'll find a thousand entries oh uh, here we go I think it's like that without the end descriptions yeah okay try this again no yep. in summaries and I don't think it helps to separate we'll try it but I think you end up getting a, just a whole bunch more in listings I'm just not getting a darn thing am I Sometimes you think you're not going to find it, and then you search by file names, and it finds it. This may be where I'll get uh, everything with record and my and desktop in it. <laughs> I'm going to click on that. It'll probably open up um, Firefox. Probably should just open Firefox first. I want to know if that's a GUI or a terminal app and how to get it going. <coughs> well it didn't uh, I don't know if it worked it's still searching over here um, what have I got here all oh, the virtual box thing that I was working on I don't need that anymore okay um, I'm going to close this too give me a little more relief on the system there it is it finally opened up yeah that's that's why I figured I needed relief 
<clears throat> so the search is done and there's nothing there. Okay. But it looks like it's working on opening up that page I tried to open up. Well, I'll try record my, uh, you know, you know how they're going to decide to name them, so. keep saying I need to learn how to do these there you know you can search for apps in the terminal and can't remember I think it's not that hard and it's so much quicker than the way DNF is it used to didn't be a problem really with the other apps especially if, uh, MX it was really fast I'm extender DNF extender they were fast okay here it is github let's see Okay, do we have anything else about no pictures or anything telling you how it works didn't look like there's a readme file let's look at the rest of this first read requires should include GTK li libraries in order to run the application CMD line arguments are not handled properly hmm pull request Just a five prototypes for. Okay. Well, I think it's a command line app. That's what I'm gathering. Let's look at the README and see. I guess I'm going to have to download it. Where is it? Huh. Build fixes to make it buildable with Python and setup tool. FROS. So I'm going to gather that it's a. Uh, maybe I clicked on it. Wrong one. Huh? Oh, uh -huh. it is. Yeah. There's, there's some Python code right there. So, I don't know. It looks like they're still really working on it to me. Huh? Wasn't quite done, but they put it in there. Let's see what happens. Cannot run. Record my desktop. No screen pl testing plugin is available. Please install plugin matching your environment. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, because it said it used GTK record my desktop. And the thing is, if I just start trying to install record my desktop, which it does look like it's spelled like that, doesn't it? And without any dash as well. That doesn't necessarily mean... Oh, I accidentally clicked on that link. Let me open it up. It doesn't necessarily mean that... Uh, I could save that file. Maybe I will. It's probably a good idea. All right, let's see. Hey guys, how did I get LibreOffice? I was trying not to open it up because it's, you know, heavier use usage and it opened it up anyway. I was trying to open up KWrite. I bet I'm going to get up with them both. I might have accidentally clicked on that. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but see just how long it takes to open up.
Alright, now. Um I could have been misspelling it in there for all I know. So let's uh, do this. I don't know yeah, I could have been misspelling it. That's one thing I hadn't really thought about. Just because it looks like record my desktop to me doesn't mean it was spelled just right. So <clears throat> Yeah, I don't see how, why in the world that they would have dropped or recorded my desktop out of, oh, I don't think I have RPM, maybe I don't have RPM Fusion, re I know I don't own my server and I need to put them in there, no, I got RPM Fusion or I wouldn't even have VLC, I don't think I can look at the, let's see if I can look at the repositories, nope, yeah, I can. Yeah, I've got uh, RPM Fusion, or there, selected. I did think about selecting, uh, it just reminds me, I just I did think about selecting uh, Fedora test updates testing to see if that would fi possibly fix my, uh, there's like a new, I've got updates. Yeah, well, I meant, te yeah, testing might fix OBS could try that Let's see update source updates testing yeah this is door 28 you know for door 29 has been out of long enough now that maybe some of the testing updates might actually be good I can't see where I'm at though Let's go to the top and work way down. I'll read better that way. Cisco. I don't know what Cisco has to do with anything. I just read today. I had no idea this was going on. Red Hat, the parent company of Fedora, who, you know, my beloved Fedora for all these years, has been bought out by IBM. And the whole article was about, oh, no, what's going to happen? You know, it's going to be made proprietary and or ruin the... It may not. It, well, I don't guess it'll go completely proprietary, but it'll ruin the run a lot of things. They'll they'll be uh, the free. It'll ruin the freedom and the um, um, well. There's no telling what they would do. You know what what they might do to. Uh, and they were saying how uh, I hadn't even paid attention. You know, I used to read a lot about that stuff, but. They were saying that uh, IBM, in the last, you know, historically in the last so many years, has really big uh, patent troll. You know, they're patent trolls. They, they've been uh, just suing the heck out of everybody and uh, over all kinds of, you know, obscure patents and going after small companies and, um, you know, just gobbling, you know, just gobbling everything up. They were saying this article, now this is just one article, and like I said, I haven't been paying attention to this, but they were saying they thought they were worse than Microsoft in doing that. So, so, let's go back to So anyway, now I'm like, oh, man, is it going to is it gonna be my favorite distro ever since uh, Door 5, since 2005? Is it going to turn into one that's not going to be, you know, they'll start wanting to charge for all the stuff that actually works, <laughs> and it won't be... Uh, you know, any fun to use anymore or uh, or be too ex expensive to use, you know. So anyway, I don't know. That's really, that really was a surprise to me because I hadn't been paying attention to all that. Okay, Fedora Debug, Fedora Source, Fedora RPM Fusion Free, RPM, uh, Debug Info is for, you know, when, for, for debugging, for bugs, you know, figuring out bugs. And unless you're a programmer, you... The only time you need to put it on there is if if it's if a uh, bug report needs it in order to send the bug report, and uh, for as a regular user like me, anyway. Uh, let's see, RPM Fusion free source. Okay, now when it says RPM Fusion, when it says free and non-free, what it means is free is completely open source, free of any proprietary software and. Non-free ha may have it's still free to use, but it may have some non-open source software, some proprietary software in it, or as what do they say, code? You know, they usually say uh, 
binaries. For some reason, that makes a big difference to the programming types. Did that find anything? Well, it found some stuff at least, but I don't know if it found what I'm looking for. Okay, let's go ahead and turn on the repos I won't turn on, though. Because next time it does updates, maybe I might run the update uh, and see if it fixed uh, OBS. First, I'm going to uninstall, um, record my desktop, and then I can record the crashes of OBS instead of just screenshots and stuff. Updates, testing, debug, debug info, RPM fusion. Wait. I'm getting confused, talking, telling stories. Free updates, debug info, source, testing. Okay, RPM fusion, free updates, testing. RPM Fusion Free Updates Testing Debug Info. RPM Fusion Free Updates Testing Source. I don't need the source. Uh, Non-free debug info. Non-free source. That's what I was talking about, free and non-free. Oh, that's source. You don't need all these extra ones. They just clutter things up, and you know how it's already hard enough to figure out which one you want, and, and drag over, boy, it'll really get hard to figure out if you put all those extra debug and source stuff in there. Non-free updates, debug info. Non-free updates, source. Non-free updates, testing. That's what I'm looking for. Now then, non-free updates, testing, debug. Non-free updates, testing, Skype. I have Skype in there. I downloaded the newest Skype because Microsoft owned Skype in there. Yesterday I saw that they're going to quit supporting Skype. I've been just using it in Firefox, although you can't... Uh, do video chats, but you can just do text in there, and I've been just using it for that. But uh, now it's not even going to be supported at all. You have to use uh, Microsoft browser or Chrome. So I thought, well, I, I think I think I have Skype installed on here, but I'm going to go ahead and install the newest version. Yeah, it might actually the one since I already have it, it might get updated automatically. I didn't think about that. It probably would. I'll have to just check and see then. Updates, debug info, updates, test, sor uh, source, updates, testing. That's already on. I just did that. Updates, testing, debug, uh, testing, source. Okay, apply. Let's make, uh, hopefully there won't be any errors in applying those. If there is, I'll have to just, I'll get canceled. <laughs> Instead of trying to figure them all out. Well, I was, I mean, it's a shot in the dark that it would fix OBS. Well, not too much of a shot in the dark. It, I got it maybe a better, better chance of the testing updates fixing OBS than the uh, because it may be a new fix, uh, whether it's from Fedora or, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure you have to use the RPM. Fu I think OBS is not in the regular Fedora repos. It'd be in the RPM Fusion repos. And uh, that's taken a long time, isn't it? I don't know what that little one, the little blue line went across. Let's do it. I guess, oh, I guess that's showing you that it's happening. There we go. That's part of the process. Yeah, there's Froze where I installed that. And there is no record my desktop available. That is really weird. I think I've already went through all this and tried to find it real hard. And uh, oh well, yeah, this is how I found it before. But I don't. I will try descriptions. I don't. I think I've already done this. Well, I'll try it again because now I can't remember. Froze. Okay. Summaries. Froze. Ah. Record desktop. Entries. Well, they're certainly not. If bro, okay, now froze record on oh, record my desktop all one word. It may not really. 
Oh, I typed it wrong. Re. Okay. Resolve. Re. There is no record. Nothing that says record in the beginning. Just thought of something. So they used to always call uh, desktop recording screencasts. I'll see if there's anything under screencast. Yeah, it's going to be. Doesn't seem to be. It's not searching very good. I'm trying to use the search. Screen grab. What? Where'd it go? Screen grab. Screen grabber. Screenshots. Probably doesn't do video then. That's not what I want. And nothing under record, I don't think. Or desktop, remote desktop into Windows Terminal Server. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, I think I played with that before. Yeah, see this now if it's there and I'm just having this much trouble find it, I'll just flat be pissed off. Um I don't know why it would be gone really. It's been there forever. Let's see. Record my desktop. Ask Dora, how would I do that? Okay. It's in the Fedora Wiki, even. Record my desktop. There's one I'd forgotten about. Ist Istanbul. In order to make Theora. To our videos of your desktop session. These can be useful to create videos, so and so, so and so. I always like record my desktop better, though. I do remember that now. How to record my desktop and mic. I just remember you can do it with VLC, but it really is heavy on the system use resources. And I never did get the audio to work in VLC, or at least not. Maybe I did years ago, but like I said, it was too heavy on the system resource usage. But I haven't in, so in the last several distros, I haven't been able to figure it out. I think it should do it. Yeah, GTK recorded my desktop. I was talking about it crashing and stuff, but that's what I like, the one I like the best. <coughs> They're talking about froze right there. <coughs> Simple screen recorder. So I just skipped over that. I wasn't really paying attention to it. Thing, but uh, <coughs> 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 sorry. <sighs> so 
simple screen recorder. Oh, it kind of looks like it'd be cool. Good. At the same page I've already been on. <clears throat> yeah, screen casting. Yeah, see, that's what they. I already know that the froze doesn't work without record my desktop, and I can't find record my desktop to install it. Istanbul, yeah. Now I'm going to, yeah, I'll open that up in another. Oh, this is important. Istanbul isn't available in Fedora 22, Fedora 23. <clears throat> That's probably why I don't use it no more. GTK, record my desktop. It only records in AUG, AUG video, or Theora format, which I swear YouTube used to let you upload that, that format, but now they don't, so you have to convert them to something that YouTube takes before you can upload them. But DNF, <coughs> DNF, YUM install, or DNF, QT. Yeah, that's the other one I was talking about. And then... Create RAM disk, huh? Never heard of that before. I'm gonna try that. <clears throat> Can't find it in there. I'm just gonna go try the commands this time. Wait, let's go back. I wonder. Let's record. I'm gonna add GTK to record my desktop. I really do want to know. Well, for one thing, I'm wondering if it's not available anymore, because that could be older info. Yeah, I see nothing. In names. <clears throat> with yum. Okay, yeah, you can do it with yum in Fedora 21 and earlier. Fedora 22 with DNF. Well, let's just see if we can install it. Let's see. Um, select all tabs. I want to get these saved. <clears throat> I might have to go to something else. can open those other ones up if I decide to do simple screen recorder look pretty interesting it worked better than any of the other ones I've tried that from what I remember <clears throat> so let's close that open up a terminal again <clears throat> I'm going around this circle because uh, I want to be able to I want to be able to record what I'm doing <clears throat> You know, when I don't have uh, 
like it already hit entered itself there all they did was paste that in sometimes they do that and sometimes they most times they don't <clears throat> whenever you paste the rest of a command in it looks like it's already working <clears throat> without me hitting enter Looks like my uh, monitor. <clears throat> Don't want to fix what you see. Turn my monitor off and back on. See if it would re. It looks like it's not uh, fitting this my screen good. Like it's cut off on the left a little bit. <clears throat> it might have to do with what you see. I don't think so. Didn't actually change anything in what I see. Okay, what happened? <clears throat> no match. Okay. Oh, let's do it with. Let's try to just record my desktop. They have ev ev evidently it's not in uh, Fedora repos or RPM Fusion. No match. So that's not something I can do. <clears throat> All right. And what was the other things I just looked at? Istanbul is not. Yeah, so this is an older. So what if there's anything else in there? I think that's the only two they said. And it says right here that it's not available in Fedora 22 and 23 repos. Yeah, so it's probably not being actively developed anymore. So, <clears throat> let's get back in our folder we just made. The one that looked interesting to me was a uh, simple screen recorder. It looked like a pretty good interface. 2018, so maybe it'll be usable. <clears throat> oh, somebody wrote, they're saying they wrote it, okay. Yeah, it looks like it would be simple enough. QT based. <clears throat> Faster than FFmpeg. PLC and FFmpeg Avcon B. Sounds pretty good. Pause and resume. <clears throat> Can also do live streaming. Really? Twitch, live stream, UDP. Doesn't say anything about YouTube though. <clears throat> it's not really all that finished yet. <clears throat> Crashes sometimes. But that's still very interesting, maybe for later. Oh, that's auto updates.
because since I can't stream right now, there's a mention of YouTube. <clears throat> well, that must be just how to that's like the questions and answer. Kden Live will make desktop videos, but sometimes it works good and sometimes it doesn't work at all and sometimes it over over too much for my computer. That's my favorite video editor though. <clears throat> I thought about that a minute ago. I thought about maybe just using, trying to use it. I'm not sure if I have it on here or not either. It's gone back and forth between just flat not running on certain Fedora distros and running great the next time, you know, and back and forth though. Anyway, they're going on about it there. <clears throat> Somebody's saying they did use it with YouTube. That's why I was thinking the YouTube gives you your address and your, your stream code, so you might be able to do it. Yeah, use FLV like I'm doing on OBS, H.264. MP3 audio codec 128 kilobytes work perfectly and is exactly what I need. Uh, it says it's very useful if you want to stream only part of the screen and not the screen, all the screen by default. Of course, it wouldn't be like OBS where you can switch from cameras and all that. It would just be a screencast. <clears throat> That's something I was forgetting. Yeah, oh yeah, but you'd only be streaming. That's a thought. If, uh, from the bang. Okay, well, I'm going to put that in there because that might be useful too. I think that might be that person's. <clears throat> There's a, they're recording for YouTube. I don't think that's up to date though. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that right now. <clears throat> this is a simple screen recorder and there's where we Okay, simple screen recorder is available. RPM Fusion Record Repository. I guess I forgot to search for it in DNF. Let's see, let's just try DNF install simple screen recorder and see if it's, I've already got. Oh, that's setting up RPM Fusion repos. Well, I've already got those, so that's all there. Okay, Red Hat, other. Okay, so that's where we need to be. All right, where's our terminal window? Let's try it there. <clears throat> Simple screen recorder, one package, 2.3 megabytes. Yes, yes, I do. You can't 
run two uh, screen recorders at the same time most of the time because they will both want the same. They want to grab the same code, you know, the same thing, same window, same everything, and so they'll something's going to go wrong, you know. But yeah, doing now doing this will allow me to show the um, the un uninstalling and reinstalling OBS. But in, but I think what I'll do <clears throat> doing this might might check for updates. I just thought about that. Just installing a program may go ahead and check for updates. I was just sitting here thinking, though, I think now that I added all those other repos, those testing repos, I should just try that before I uninstall OBS and start over. It's not that bad because I saved all my configuration files, you know, my scenes and everything. But, uh, yeah, I'll do the updates. I'm going to need a break pretty bad now. So what I can do is start the updates, go take a break, and then when they're done, I can come back. <clears throat> Shouldn't take takes a bit long to just sit here and watch it during a video when I don't have anything else to do. But um, you know, it won't be. This is only what was it? Very small. Oh, 2.3 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. I mean, I still can't get over how long. Even in the terminal, it takes, ever since they implemented DNF, how much longer it takes to do everything, even in the terminal. Something like that would have been done and installed and done before you blinked your eyes, before you realized whether or not to, you know, it worked. <clears throat> Except for when it stops and asks you, do you want to do this? But. And the whole thing was it was supposed to all get better. That was why they changed from YUM to DNF. They said YUM is getting old, it's getting bloated, you know, and so on. And there were some things that did take a long time. Uh, long, you know, long, they, you could know, I noticed over the years that they were taking longer. Some things in the YUM extender, you know, that took longer than... Okay. Yeah, I think YUM extender took a good while to get up and ready to go, uh, checking the repositories. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to save that before I forget. Could try to start it from there, but I'm in as root, so we don't really want to run it as root. Um, let's open up. I don't know why. I, I must have just misclicked but last time, but I just did that on purpose this time. By the time I do the search, find the text editor, I just need to put k right up there, I guess. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't in my systems. Well, I want to get this in there. So well, GTK record my desktop is no more in uh, Fedora. I bet it's still available in uh, uh, <clears throat> Debane. Couldn't think of my words. Where did 
sure I saved that. I saved it in the right folder, didn't I? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's see if that has shown up in the... Uh, Close the browser now. I want to see before I take off from here. I want to go ahead and uh, see if simple screen recorder. It's not uh, not what I thought was in there, but now that makes sense. I remember now. There it is, simple screen recorder. Now it may air out or something because I'm doing. It. I hope it doesn't crash OBS. There it is. Welcome to Simple Screen Recorder. I don't think I'll do that in the, this video because I think it, well, it shouldn't crash over yet. Well, who knows what it will do. Name is program actually has a lot of options. Don't worry though, there are really just two things that you need to know. One is default settings are usually fine if you don't know that. What something is, does, just use the default. Two, almost all settings have tool tips. Just hover over the mouse and over something to find out what it does. For more information, go there. Okay, so looks neat. Looks well done. I mean, just to, even with some nice graphics and stuff. I'm going to close it because I know you're not going to be able to set everything up with another screen recorder running. It's going to conflict. I know that. So, I'm going to go ahead and close. Um, yeah, I won't have cameras. I will, it will record nothing but screen. And so, definitely want OBS back. I thought, I saw something the other day. It said the best top five, uh, you know, streaming apps for Linux. And I saw XSplit in that list. And I thought, well, I didn't remember if I did. I was kind of thinking XSplit didn't run in Linux, but maybe it does. Or maybe that's what I started out with. I know I started out with XSplit. Actually, it was one before that. But anyway, I didn't read the article. I was just trying to fix OBS. But um, because XSplit is, you know, shareware type thing, you know, part of it works. It's limited functionality for free. And then you got to pay not just buy the software, but pay a monthly or yearly subscription to have it uh, work and uh, have it fully functional. And if you want a little, I think it, if I remember right, even, it even charge more if you want to do game streaming, you know, and there's all kinds of bull crap with it. So uh, anyway, I was thinking, well, if I can't get OBS working, maybe I could try XSplit again. But uh, I'm going to go now and take a break, and, I'll, and I will set up that simple screen recorder so that I can at least do a desktop recording and uh, hopefully it'll work well. And, uh, you know, oh, I forgot. Hey, Gammon, I wish I hadn't shut the uh, terminal. Forgot what I was going to do. The updates. Let's see. May have already tried to run. It was wasn't very. No, it was going to be a while till it was going to try to run. Now that I have the updates testing, it should come up with quite a bit of stuff, really. So what do we got? Virtual box. Oh yeah. See now that I uninstalled the thing that was hanging it up, that's the only thing showing up though. Okay. So. Um, yeah, and that came up real quick, too. Maybe because I just got through running, you know, I was running uh, that install. I've been running, well, I ran updates not long ago, too, so probably didn't have to search as much stuff. It looked through the cache. So I'm going to let that install. So that's all it's going to be is just VirtualBox, but that'll be good. And then maybe I can go back and reinstall that uh, guest editions if I need it. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so very good. So I'm going to go now and uh, come back after a while. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm certain that I would like to show that app being set up in the video, but I just don't think it would work. So uh, anyway, I've got to go anyway. All right. <laughs>